Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm so excited because we have the return of the balloon. I don't know if you remember, but way back I made a video using a balloon with epoxy resin inside the balloon to mould it. Well, this time I'm doing a similar kind of thing, but this time I'm using J Diction's UV resin on the outside of the balloon to make some absolutely stunning trinket dishes. If that has you intrigued, stay tuned and enjoy the video. The balloon I'm using today is just a regular party balloon made of latex. Just one of the cheap ones, you don't need anything fancy. I could have blown up my balloon in the old fashioned way, but I have one of these self-sealing balloon valves which are so easy. You just pop them in the balloon and blow on the tube. You don't have to knot the balloon, the valve in there just keeps it inflated so it's as simple as blowing down the tube and it's done. I've blown it up very very small so there's hardly any surface tension and a very low chance of it popping so I wasn't worried about it popping. And there you can see that plastic tub which I'm going to be using as a template to draw my guideline. I'm just drawing around the tub with a black acrylic marker. Now, as you can see, this is my second attempt. I cut out the first attempt from the film because you didn't need to see me go wrong. The, what, what I did wrong the first time was I put it, the pane on the wrong part of the tub and it didn't transfer onto the balloon. So I tried again and just repositioned the balloon, pressed it down to get that black line. And then once I'd done that, I just filled in any gaps by hand. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's just a guideline so I can see roughly where the edges of my bowl will be. So to make my trinket dishes today, I'm going to be using J Diction UV resin. J Diction has a whole range of different kinds of UV resin and really it doesn't matter which one you use. So I chose the one in the biggest bottle because I had a lot of that and I wasn't going to be afraid of it running out. I actually made three bowls using that bottle and still had plenty left in the bottle. I'll leave a link in the video description along with a discount code. You really need to try J Diction UV Resin if you've never tried it before. It really is excellent. So I took a big plastic cup to stand my balloon in just for when I needed two hands because most of the time I actually hold the balloon to put the resin on. But it's good to have somewhere to put it when you need both your hands free. So now it's just a case of squeezing on plenty onto the balloon and then once it's on I just rubbed it around with my fingers, obviously with my gloves on <laughs> and just try and make it as even as you can and if it goes over the line that's fine, in fact it's better. I went over the line on purpose because afterwards you can trim it and get a nice neat edge. If you try to get up to the line and just go that far, you're not going to have any excess to cut off and you're left with whatever, you know, if, if you've got a wibbly wobbly line by trying to get it up to that black line, that's what you'll be stuck with. But if you go over, you can neatly cut it with scissors at the end and you get a lovely neat finish so that's why I went over the line and so as you can see it levels itself out nicely and when you've got it quite even you can put it underneath your UV lamp for about two minutes for a full cure. So at first when I was using my UV lamp I was kind of holding it over the balloon and moving it around to make sure I got all the sides as well but I could tell that I was going to get fed up of doing it that way. It was going to annoy me. <laughs> so I came up with a plan. 
Oh, and by the way, before I tell you about the plan, you might be wondering why I've still got the plastic on my UV lamp. Well, that's because I'm always getting my UV lamps mucky all the time because I've always got sticky fingers. So I decided for this new lamp that I've just got to leave the plastic on to protect it. And already I've only used it a few times and it's already mucky on that plastic. So I'm so glad I left it on. Anyway, back to the plan. What I decided to do was make a kind of UV bridge. I had a look around my craft room and found two tubs the same size and just put the UV lamp on top of those. Then I found that it wasn't quite high enough, so I got two more tubs, made the bridge a little bit higher and put the lamp on top of that. And that way I could just put the balloon under there each time I wanted to cure it. I did find that the sides didn't cure obviously as fast as the top because they weren't in the direct rays of the UV light but it worked okay. So doing that first layer was the only time where there was any danger of it popping and causing any problems. So it was like for about two minutes just coating that top layer, getting it under the lamp. I, I was quite confident it wouldn't pop anyway, but obviously UV resin cures in a couple of minutes and then once that's done, you don't have any worries about the balloon popping because it's solid. Right, once my base layer was on and cured, it was time to put another layer of resin on. But this time, I'm doing exactly the same thing again, but I'm only going to cure it for about 30 seconds because I want it to be sticky. Right, that's under the lamp curing and I'm just getting out my seashell slices from Amazon, which I absolutely love. I've used these in so many videos and projects and they're just as you can see, stunning. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be using to decorate my trinket dish today. I will have three dishes to show you at the end because I did two practice ones before filming this. And yeah, I'm only showing you the process of one of them because it's pretty much the same thing and you can just vary the colours that you use. So this part of the project does take a long time and you will need to be patient but it's nice and relaxing doing it anyway. Um, the That bit that I tried to put on first of all was too big so I broke it up. <laughs> You'll learn as you go on just like I did and yeah just stick it on to the tacky UV resin. As it happened my resin wasn't tacky enough. I just put it in under the lamp a little bit too long. It's a case of trial and error really, getting it for the right amount of time. But it was a little bit tacky and they did stay in position just enough for me to get my all my pieces on. So yeah, I didn't film it all. I just kept going, arranging them, sticking them to the tacky UV resin until I was happy with the design. Right then, so here it is with quite a lot added. Um, I tried to make it look like a natural, naturally occurring pattern rather than keeping it all symmetrical and the same. Um, yeah, and then I added the UV resin directly onto the top very gently to make sure I didn't knock the pieces out of place and then made sure it was smooth all over the dish and then cured it for two minutes, I think. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember. I can't remember if I did it a full cure or left it tacky, but we'll see together, won't we? I'll tell you in a moment. Ah, yes, now I know. <laughs> I left it tacky, so I cured it for about 30 seconds because next I was going to be adding mica powder. I went for the seashell colour, which I thought would be perfect to go with the seashell slices. And the overall effect you get from these dishes is that they're really delicate and they're not a perfect um, symmetrical shape either. And they actually look like they've been somehow carved from a, a giant piece of seashell. So that's what I was going with for this. And yeah, so I just poured it on the top and very gently moved it around with my brush. Um, because the resin was still tacky, if you touch it too hard with your brush, the brush starts to get sticky. 
So it was just a case of moving it around. And that's why I ended up just pouring a load on so that I wouldn't need to touch the surface with my brush too much. I could just move the mica powder around. And of course, I've got a piece of card underneath folded in half so I can catch the excess and pour the rest into the bottle, which you might have noticed has fallen over. But luckily, nothing fell out. <laughs> So once the tacky UV resin was completely covered with the mica powder, I could brush it more directly and make sure there was no loose powder on there. Then I just tidied up what was left on my piece of cardboard. Right then, I could see that I could still see the red balloon through that layer that I had just applied. So for the next layer, I wanted to use something that would show through and help the effect on the inside to give it like a pearlescent kind of iridescence. And so what I'm going to do this time is exactly the same thing as before, cover it with the resin, cure it for 30 seconds, but this time I'm using some chameleon flakes three different kinds. So I chose the purple pink chameleon flakes from Let's Resin along with violet aqua, I'm just reading the bottle as they come up, and what else? Violet blue, those are the three that I went with and I just applied them kind of separately so that you could see a little bit of colour change going on through that last layer when we look at it from the other side when it's finished. And here we've just skipped forward just a little bit to cut out most of that because it's just a case of, you know, dabbing it on as you can see me doing now. Okay, so once all that was on, I gave it a generous coating of clear UV resin and give it a full cure of around two to three minutes because we were ready to take it out of the balloon or take the balloon out of the bowl, should I say. <laughs> Right then, so once that was cured, before deciding to take the balloon out, I did give it a little bit of a squeeze to see how firm it felt. You don't want it to be too flimsy. It needs to be fairly firm so that it doesn't kind of collapse when you take the valve out of your balloon or if you unknot your balloon. And as you can see, the balloon, as it deflates, pulls itself away from the resin and you know it needs a little bit of coaxing to get it off but it stayed all in one and that hadn't been coated with mold release or anything like that it was just the normal balloon straight from the packet which I started working with as you saw so there was nothing on it to you know stop the UV resin from sticking so anyway I'm waffling now <laughs> I'm taking my scissors and just getting rid of the excess so that it's easier for me to cut it and once the excess has gone I can use that black line which came off with the resin so the resin stuck to the black ink that I put on which was my plan and then I had something to guide me when I was cutting along the line I went very slowly and carefully because at this stage it's still a little bit fragile. It had about six layers on, but I'm still going to add more to it, which will firm it up nicely. So yeah, we've been very careful. And so I'll speed this up and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay then, so once all that edging was off, I could have a good look at it. I quite liked the pearlescent on, um, effect on the back, but... I wasn't completely happy because it was all still quite see-through and I didn't really want it to be see-through. So I did decide to cover the back with something else, which you'll see in a minute. But before doing that, I got a big sheet of sandpaper and gave it a rub around to make sure all those edges were level. I also used my nail file for any stubborn bits and for any little bits of black line that were left on there, just filed them away because it's going to be getting another coat of UV resin on the inside anyway, so I didn't mind if I scratched it. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but you can see that pearlescent um, effect that I added to the back. You can see it through the seashell mica powder, can't you? And that was the plan. So I don't feel too bad that I'm going to be covering the back because its purpose really was to show through the front 
and it does. So I was really happy with how the inside of the bowl looked. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a wipe to make sure there's no dust left on it. And let's start on the back. So my original idea was to add gold leaf to the back. And so when I went to find my gold leaf, I was looking through all my different things and I found this one. It's the Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Flakes and it's not just gold. You've got all different colours in there. And yeah, I really quite liked it. I thought, oh, yeah that might give me a really nice effect. So that's what I chose. I'm just coating it with some UV resin, uh, just in the same way as before. I will be curing it for 30 seconds so it's still tacky and then applying the gilding flakes to the tacky UV resin. And as you can see, I've got a silicone mat there so that, you know, I didn't want to be doing it like this onto my puppy pad which is protecting my table because I would have got all fluff stuck to it so yeah I just took a silicone mat and yeah cured that for 30 seconds and then let's add the flakes so when I took the lid off I noticed that there was quite a lot of silver in there and I didn't really want silver flakes I wanted the golds and coppers and bronzes that were in there and some that have got like a little bit of a green tone to them and I really like those bits but not so much the silver so it was all a little bit fiddly <laughs> but fiddly is good I like making a mess. Anyway, I'm using two wooden skewers to pick them up and to apply them. Because if you try using like anything else, the gilding flakes will stick to it. Like if you use your fingers with the gloves on, yeah, they'd stick to that. Or anything silicon, wood seems to work best for picking them up and moving them around. And yeah, I think <laughs> I'm going to cut out most of the footage of me doing this because I got into a right mess. I'm sure you would do it much tidier, but I'm not the tidiest of people, I've got to say. <laughs> Right then, once I'd finished applying all the gold leaf, I turned it over and put it under the UV lamp. It must have had about five minutes so that the light had a chance to really get through that see-through part of the bowl and, you know, cure that resin that had just been put on for the gold flakes. So I just thought it, the, the light would penetrate better from the inside. And then I turned it over and did the other side as well. And then once it had been cured from both sides, I gave it one final layer of UV resin to the outside to protect those gold flakes. Now I seem to have lost the footage but what I did do was I used a gold pen and just went around the edges to give it a gold rim. So yeah, you didn't miss much, that's all I did. And now I'm going to coat the inside of the bowl as well in just the same way with the Jadiction UV resin. At first I was a bit worried because I thought I'd put too much in and I didn't want it to start puddling or running down and dripping and I did faff around with it for a while but actually once I put it down it kind of just leveled itself out so nicely and you didn't see any of those uneven bits because yeah it just leveled out I was really impressed actually um yeah I'm impressed by the funniest of things aren't I <laughs> but yeah so I did faff around more than I needed to because as I just said, it levelled itself out very nicely and I cured it for a full two minutes. Okay, so this is how it looks after the inside had cured and I'm really pleased that I decided to cover the back because I think the front looks a lot better with that darker background. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look see-through like it did before. It just has more substance to it somehow. But I bet you're wondering by now, how am I going to make it stand straight when it's put on a surface without rocking about all over the place? So that's what I'm doing now. 
So I've got a big ruler there, which I'm going to use in a moment. And I've made a strip of transparency film, or you might know it as acetate. And I've just drawn a circle on there as a guideline. So after drawing the circle, I turned it over. So that was working on the other side. And then I added my UV resin into that circle. I just wanted a puddle in the circle. Then I very carefully put the dish onto the puddle of UV resin. You do need to be careful, look at it from all edges to try and get it central because you only get one chance. Once you've put it down, it's down. You know, it will mess it up if you try to reposition it. So I put it down and then I got my UV lamp and you might not be able to see very well because it was a little bit out of frame. I turned it over and lifted the whole thing over the UV lamp. So, yeah, you can see what's happening there, can't you? So it's curing it from underneath and it worked. <laughs> It was one of those things that keeps you awake at night working out how you're going to do it. But I worked this one out one sleepless night and it worked. So my sleeplessness, it was worth it. <laughs> So after giving it about five minutes of curing, it was time to take off the acetate. And at first I thought it wasn't going to come off. <laughs> I think it was just on the edges. It was really stuck. But then all of a sudden it just came off really easy, as you can see. And then we've got like a foot for the bowl. And yes, it's not central. <laughs> Never mind it, I don't mind actually that it's not central, just in the same way that I don't mind that it's not a perfect circle. I think it all adds to the natural looking character that I was actually going for. So right, once I'd done that, I just took my nail file and just filed a little bit around the edges to make sure there were no sharp spots. Then I just applied a little bit of UV resin to cover that surface at the bottom. Gave it 30 seconds as before. Then I sprinkled on some gold um, pigment powder, cured it and gave it a brush and then it was finished. I just wanted it to be not see-through, that bottom bit. I don't know, it just didn't look quite right being transparent. I wanted it to match the rest of the bowl a lot better than it did. So now that one's complete, I now have three bowls which stack inside one another and let's have a look at them. That was the first one I did, very colourful one. And again, that one's with the flakes, the chameleon flakes. And then the one we did today, which I'm really happy with. I think it's a very subtle one, that one, very elegant looking. And then we have the largest one, which I think might be my favourite. Hang on. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. There it is. I quite like the colour of that one. So that's another one with... That's got chameleon powder, that one. And yeah, I love the colour of that, that olive colour. And I think the three of them look so pretty together. So it was quite a long video today, but I hope you've enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this video and I'm very, very happy with the outcome. I'd like to know what you think. If you could leave me a comment, that would be wonderful. And thank you to J Diction for supplying me with such wonderful UV resin. I will leave links to everything in the video description. Please remember to give this a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. It helps it to get recommended to other people if you give it a thumbs up. So it helps me a lot. And if you would like to subscribe and you haven't already done so, please do that. And I will see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.